the one of the big issues or meeting are the therapeutic sessions. And the first session, session 101, will deal with early management of Parkinson's disease, rehabilitation strategies, and advanced management of Parkinson's disease. Uh, in regards to my talk about early management, I have divided the talk into two major questions. One, when should we start treatment? This is a question that has been discussed for a long time. You know, there was a time that people said, well, if there is no significant motor disability, you can wait and see and just advise the patient to lead a healthy life. And then when symptoms start to become disabling, then you can start treatment. Nowadays, we have shifted our focus and we believe that we have to start treatment as early as possible because there is a lot of uh, basic and clinical evidence that the sooner you start the treatment, the better the prognosis for the patient. So that's the first question. The second question is, how do you start treatment? And I have divided my talk into two major components. One uh, related to something that has become very important in later years, which is uh, healthy habits or lifestyle changes. We know it's very important that we uh, advise our patients that in order to have a better prognosis, they have to uh, lead a very healthy life and have certain lifestyle changes. And this, these changes or these healthy habits can be divided into exercise, uh, diet, social communication, psychological well-being, and sleep. And we know that each one of those components of healthy life have an important impact on the prognosis of the disease. We know that exercise has a significant effect on, on improving the prognosis of the patient. We know that a good sleep is also important, not only because of, of you know, the, the effects on, on resting, but also because it's, it's the period of time when we sleep where toxic metabolites from our brain are cleared from the brain through a very complex system called the lymphatic system. Uh, diet, we know that diet is very important for the maintenance of a good immunological system, for maintaining a good uh, balance of our microbiota, and we know that influence on the microbiota uh, has a very significant impact on the uh, course of neurodegenerative diseases. And in recent years, it has been shown that the Mediterranean diet is the one that promotes uh, the best balance in our microbiota. And so we advise patients to try to adapt, adopt uh, a Mediterranean style diet with less red meat, more fish, more vegetables, more legumes, more seeds, and using olive oil as the fatty component of our meals. Uh, we also know that social interaction is it's quite important for the patient's well-being. And so we have to promote that to, to have them lead a very active life with a lot of social interaction and also psychological factors play a significant role. We know that if a patient is psychologically stable and he is not depressed and he's not affected in his mood, he can be more adherent to the uh, guidance of the doctor in terms of adherence to the medication, adherence to uh, leading a healthy life, exercise, etc. And the last point of the talk has to do with pharmacological management of the patients. And, and here there is an ongoing debate, you know. And if you look at the history of medication or pharmacological treatment in Parkinson's disease, it's like a wheel that has gone in circles. Uh, we started in the 60s and early 70s with a careless use of levodopa. 
levodopa was the wonder drug, the miracle drug that had changed the life of PD patients. And uh, everybody received levodopa in high doses. And soon enough, we started uh, realizing that there were a lot of complications because of this careless use of levodopa. And this coincided with the introduction of a new generation of drugs called the dopamine agonists and then the MAOB inhibitors. And so there was a period of time in which there was a balance between the use of levodopa and what it's called the levodopa sparing strategies in which you postpone the introduction of levodopa and favor the use of less potent drugs like dopamine agonists and MAOB inhibitors. Then came a time in which there was a what we may call uh, levodopaphobia, because there was a lot of publications uh, promoting the concept that levodopa was in fact toxic to the dopaminergic neurons in the brain. So on one hand, it was producing a symptomatic benefit, but on the other hand, it was causing a worsening of the pathobiological process. And so there was a time in which in, in the 1990s and 2000, where people were scared of using levodopa. And then we demonstrated that that was not true, that levodopa was not toxic. There were lots of publications, both in, in vitro and in vivo, in animals, in animal models and, and uh, pathological specimens of post-mortem tissue in, in PD patients that were analyzed. And there was no evidence that levodopa was toxic. And so in the 2000s, we reached a consensus that there had to be an equilibrium or a balance between the use of these uh, second line drugs and levodopa. But now we are witnessing a resurgence of the levodopa for all strategy. There are many colleagues throughout the world that are promoting this, saying that there is no need to postpone levodopa because uh, there is no advantage to the postponement of levodopa. And if the patients develop complications, we have advanced therapies like surgery, uh, levodopa infusions, apomorphine pumps, et cetera, et cetera. And I believe we are uh, going perhaps back to careless again, so completing the circle. And we have to be very careful about that. I think there are some patients, particularly the young patients who are more prone to develop motor complications in which we need to be prudent and cautious about the use of levodopa early in the course of the disease. And also our own society has, uh, in, in its evidence-based medicine reviews, uh, confirms that dopamine agonist and MAOB inhibitors are clinically useful as monotherapy. So in certain cases, as I mentioned before, in young patients, we need to be very careful because it's not only the end result we are concerned with, but we are concerned with the journey of how these patients behave during the first four, five, six, seven years of the disease. If we start levodopa very early, most probably these patients will develop complications very soon. And there is no doubt that in older patients, there is no need to postpone levodopa. Levodopa is the gold standard of treatment of Parkinson's disease, is the best drug, the most potent symptomatically talking. So we have to balance our decisions according to the characteristics of our patients.